In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Mantis and Exponent review because our test is coming up and this is something pretty much guaranteed to be on the exam. So let's dive in. What do you need to know? Mantis and Exponent is for floating point binary representation. Now, this means the decimal point is moved along the binary number depending upon the exponent. Now, our answers that we're gonna be doing today will be normalized. The Mantissa is gonna be in two's complement as well as the exponent. If you're not in a Cambridge class, you need to find out if your class is following the IEEE -E -E 754, which uses sine mantissa. In our video, we are not using sine mantissa, we are using two's complement. Now, a mantissa normalized means the first two digits must be different. A positive representation is going to be 0.1 with a certain amount of digits behind it, depending on how many bits have been allocated to the mantissa. A negative representation is going to start with 1.0 then have a certain amount of bits behind it, depending on how many bits have been allocated to the mantissa. So let's go over some tips that may help you. Let's start with positive numbers first. A positive number is pretty easy to convert because we're just adding the numbers till we get to the right amount. Now, you need to know the decimal values. Without knowing these, you're not gonna be able to solve the problem. So here's a very small, simplified uh, table. So we know two to the power of zero is one. In AS, in our pre-ACE classes, when we were solving for binary numbers, every time we moved to the left one place, it increased exponentially. For example, one, when we moved to the left one place, we doubled it. One becomes two. When we move left to the next place, two doubled becomes four. When I move to the left, another place, four becomes eight. When I move to the next place, eight becomes 16, and so on. That's something that we've seen since pre-ACE. What we saw this year in A level is when we move to the right, we are dividing or cutting the number in half. We are dividing by two. What is eight divided by two? That gets me four. What is four divided by two? That gets me two. Two divided by two gets me one. But what if I divide one by two? Well, that gives me one half, which is 0.5, which is the same as two to the power of negative one. But what if I have 0.5 and I divide that by two? That gives me 0 0.250. If I move that to the right, I cut that number in half, I get 0.125 and then it continues on and on. That makes this a lot easier to understand because you know what values you need to work with. So let's take a look at this practice test question. In a particular computer system, real numbers are stored using floating point representation with 12 bits for the mantissa, four bits for the exponent. That has to be given to you. Uh, they're usually gonna give you boxes. That way it's very easy to know how many bits you're working with. They may or may not tell you two's complement form for both mantis and exponent. You need to know whether they tell you this or not. It must be in two's complement. So they want us to calculate the floating point representation of 2.5 in this system, and they want us to show our working. Now we're gonna go ahead and make it normalized. It's just a lot easier to do rather than, you know, moving this to a random spot and trying to move it back to where it needs to be just, let's just go ahead and make it normalized. So here's our table that we're working with. I'm looking for 2.5 and for positive, we're just adding till we get the right numbers. I don't need a one, I do need a two, so that's gonna be a one. I don't need a four, I don't need an eight. Um, I do need a 0 0.5. So my binary representation, because it's two's complement, I don't need this extra zero. It's just gonna be 0, 1, 0, 0. 0.5. So plus 2.5 in binary is this number. What I need to do now is express it in mantissa and exponent. I want it to be positive, so I know my leading bit value must be a zero. I want it to be normalized, which means my next value must be a one. So what I need to do now is finish filling in these boxes so I get my representation that I've written in green. Zero, one, zero, one. That is my representation. Now you may be saying, well, that's not right because the decimal is right here. Well, just slow down for a minute, be patient, we'll tell you how we get that. What do I put in the rest of these boxes? Zeros, there's no other values in our binary representation. Now the decimal, this is where the exponent comes in. I need to move my decimal to the right. When I move my decimal to the right, my number is getting bigger. And when I move it to the right, that must mean it's a positive exponent. It says two's, compl two's complement form for both mantis and exponent, because my exponent is positive, I'm gonna start it with a zero. How many places do I need to move it to the right to get 0, 1, 0, 0.1? I need to move it one, two places, which means I don't need a four, I do need a two, and I don't need a one. 
and I just picked up three easy points because when I move this decimal one, two places, I get the same answer I have written in green, which is 010.1. The decimal will always be between the first two bits. Sometimes they will show you the decimal between the first two bits. Sometimes they will not. Regardless of whether they show you that there or not, the decimal always starts between the first two bits. All right, let's talk about negative numbers. So a negative number can be tricky, but there's something you can do to make it easy. And we went over this in the original video. All we need to do is remove the negative sign and find the positive representation. We use the two's complement trick, which I will show you, and we convert it back to negative. So let's take a look at this. Calculate the floating point representation of negative 2.5 in this system. Show you're working. Not a problem. They just made it super easy for us because we need the positive representation of uh, positive 2.5 so we can use the two's complement trick. So what we do is, here's my positive 2.5 in binary, and here's the trick we do. We start from the far right, we ignore all zeros until we get to the first one. When we get to the first one, we keep it and we flip everything else. So I'm starting from the right, well my first digit is a one, I'm going to keep that. So I keep that one there. I flip everything else. This zero becomes a one. This one becomes a zero. This zero becomes a one. So what I need to do is I need to show that in my mantissa and exponent. Now I want it to be normalized. I have a negative number here, which means it's gonna start with the one. So that is this one in green down here. Then I'm gonna have a zero. Then I'm gonna have a one. And then I'm gonna have another one. What do I have every, everywhere else? zeros. So now I have negative 2.5, but this isn't actually negative 2.5. I need to move that decimal so I can have 101.1. Well, how far do I need to move the decimal to get 101.1? 1, 2. Not a problem. Now I am moving it to the right. I don't need negative 8 because remember this is in 2's complement. That first number is negative. I do not need 4. I do need 2 and I do not need one. Now it just happens to work in this scenario that we're moving the decimal to the uh, same amount of spaces. That's not always gonna be the case, but all you have to do is ask yourself, how far do I need to move the decimal to get the number that I'm trying to get? Okay, so then we had this question. Find the denary value for uh, f the following binary floating point number. Show you're working. This is, they're just giving us points here. We're already at six points. Here we're about to pick up another three for nine, then we're gonna pick up 10. We're gonna be picking up 11 points and we're not even on the second question of the exam. And you're gonna have Mantis and Exponent on there. It's extremely likely, it's a very popular question. So you definitely wanna uh, be familiar with it. Okay, so I take a look at my exponent. I found my decimal, it's always gonna be between the first two bits. I convert the exponent. This is positive three because I have the value of one, I have the value of two, two plus one is three. That means I need to move my decimal to the right three places. So I'm gonna move my decimal to the right three places, which gives me zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 zero. Well, what is zero, zero, one, one point zero? Zero, zero, one, one point zero is three. The first value is one, the second value is two. I have a leading zero, which tells me it's a positive number. So I know right away, this has a value of three or 3.0. Uh, look at part D, state whether the floating point number given in part C, that's this right here, is normalized or not normalized. Well, in order for it to be normalized, it needs the, the leading digits must be different. So we say not normalized, we pick up an easy point there. A normalized floating point numbers uh, first two digit must be different. Now, what you want to do is you want to be as specific as possible. You want to say it must be 0 0.1 for a positive number or 1.0 for a negative number. Now, you may argue and say, well, that's only one, uh, only one mark there. But you don't want to have an examiner who writes in E, which means not enough. So just go ahead and tell them what you know. 0 0.1 for positive, 1.0 for negative. That way, if there's any a situation where they may be saying, hmm, not sure if that's enough, you go ahead and you uh, remedy that 
uh, right away. Okay, affecting range and precision is the last thing you need to know for this review. Uh, the system changes so then it now allocates 8 bits to both the mantissa and the exponent. Say two effects this has on the numbers that can be represented. Okay, so I now have less bits in the mantissa. I, only, I went from 12 to 8. What does that do to the accuracy of my numbers? Well, decreasing bits in the mantissa affects precision and accuracy. You now have less bits to work with to get as close as possible to a more specific value. But now I have eight bits in the exponent. I had four, now I have eight bits in the exponent. Well, that just means I can have more room to move the decimal because I can represent a higher number in my exponent. So increasing the bits in the exponent now allows for a larger range of numbers since you can increase how far you can move the decimal point. So affecting the exponent affects the range, affecting the mantissa affects precision and accuracy. Now in this case, they took away bits in the mantissa, so that gives us less precision and accuracy. They gave us more bits to the exponent that increases the range. So the reverse is also gonna be true. If they take bits away from the exponent, we have a smaller range, but we can get higher precision and accuracy. So the mantissa and exponent bits, there's a trade-off. You can give more bits to the exponent, but you have to take them from the mantissa. If you want more bits in the mantissa, you have to take them from the exponent. I hope you found this review helpful. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next video.